Okay, guys, before I start this episode, yes, I am just casually dropping a whole new show on you all with no warning, Beyonce style. Yep, but I do have a video or I am making a video that I will be featuring on my YouTube channel page where I talk more about the show. So you can go there and find it. But first, let's just get into this episode. Hi, everyone. You are watching or listening to another episode of the Method to the Music show. And just like there is a method to the madness in life, there is a method to the music business. And this show is here to put you on game and teach you all about that by having conversations with guests from all different areas of the music industry. I myself have worked all over the music industry. I am a music lawyer. Before that, I worked in performing rights, publishing, and digital distribution. I also am a co-founder of a TV film music sync library. So I have somewhat of a healthy dose of knowledge in this business, and they say health is wealth and knowledge is power. So I'm here to keep you healthy in this business and empower you by educating you on the madness that is the music business. I am your host, Tania Coates, Ty Law, TC, and um, yeah. Today we are going to get into music as it is used in the visual media. So that's TV, film, and music videos. And I have the perfect guest for that today because he is one of the top music video directors in the game. He has done hundreds of videos across pretty much every single genre. And just to name a few people that he's done the videos for, it's a long list. I'm not going to go through all of it, but Soldier Boy, Lil Wayne... Method Man, Red Man, RZA, Busta Rhymes, Guns N' Roses, <laughs> Fall Out Boy. The list goes longer and longer, so, but I'm not going to go through all that. Um, beyond that, he is also a filmmaker and film director. He is the executive producer at Lux Angeles Studios, which is a an award-winning, Emmy award-winning, full-service production house. And you are also the senior content advisor at Vire Network, which, correct me if I'm wrong, is a movie streaming platform. And then last but certainly not least, he is my business partner at um, the TV film sync, music sync library that I just mentioned. I've actually never talked about this publicly or on camera, so this is the first time. But it's not like an official announcement. It's We're just keeping it like a soft launch for now. Mm-hmm. But it's called Boombox Apocalypse, and he is the founder. So I am... Very excited to have him on because I just love and adore him. So it's Dale, Restigini. People in the business call you Rage, though. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you for having me. You certainly, uh, when describing yourself, you certainly hit, you know, you have a mouthful. You you, you have done a lot and you've accomplished a lot. <laughs> thank you. Which is why, you know, I fell in love with you in terms of being able to uh, ultimately think you're the perfect co-founder for me to bring on Boombox Apocalypse. Yeah, Boombox. That's also a mouthful to say. Yes. Can't say that five times uh, fast. No, but because it's, <laughs> I was looking I was looking for a name that just kind of hit hard. And I always loved the name Boombox. And I always loved the word Apocalypse. And, and because it actually metaphorically kind of makes sense in terms of where music started in the analog world and where we're in our digital world, I, I really like how it kind of just fits. I like the sound of it. Yeah. I like the sounds that go together, like the X sounds yeah, and the yeah, yeah, p- sounds. Yeah. It's, it's nice, but it is a mouthful to say. <laughs> well, listen, you know, we're, we're, we're in our journey and we're crushing it. So I look forward to what's coming. We are crushing it. We are crushing it. But yes, like I said, I wanted to get into this and you are the perfect guest for this because you clearly, from everything I just said, have worked all over. Your whole life's career is built around music in media. Um video, film, TV. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to educate my viewers and listeners on that today. And I guess I'll start off with um, what that's referred to. In the industry, people just refer to that as sync, so synchronization. The reason that they refer to it as that is because it is taking your audio, the music, and it is synchronizing it, syncing it with the visual media. And that means, like I said, TV, film, um, music videos. So commercials and other content, commercials, video games, anything that is a visual. That's what that is. Yep. And to do that, um, they have to get permission from all the rights holders of the music. And that would be the rights holders who are the master sound recording, whoever owns the master sound recording. That's typically a label. They also have to get permission from the 
whoever owns the composition copyright, which is what most people refer to in the industry as publishing. So publishers. And again, if you do not have a label, if you're not signed to a label, if you never signed a pub deal, then you are the owner of the Master Sound recording and you are the owner of the publishing on that song. So that's all the rights that are needed in that way. Let's see where else I wanted to go with that. Um, oh, yes. They need permission, not just, they need permission from every single rights holder in the, of that song on both sides. And that's including uh, for music videos too, because there's a big misconception. I don't know if it's a misconception, but I know a lot of people don't know about that or they don't talk about that, that you need permission from your co-writers if they have publishing to do your own music video. You can't just put it out there, even though people do do that. But normally if you're signed to a label, there'll be a section in your agreement that will state that you give them the right to, uh, it's normally in the controlled composition clause section. It will say that you give them the right to sync your music to the music video and that you get permission, you have permission from your other collaborators on it as well. They give the same authorization. And this is important because for people who are indie and who are not signed, if you like get a beat from beat stars or like one of those yeah. beat making sites, you need to make sure that in those agreements, there is something in there that gives you the authorization to do that. If you're sharing publishing with them, I've seen it in some of the beat stars one, but not in a lot of them, but I have seen it in some of them. And even just if you do a split agreement with your co-writers, that's the same. It's the same thing. You need to make sure that there's something in there that says that they give you a perpetual sync license specifically for the music video. And I wanted to bring that up because a lot of people don't know how to how that works. And they don't know how that works all around in music videos. So that's why you're the perfect person. <laughs> and I want you to break down further, like just explain the entire like music video process from fees and costs and your role as sure. a music video director. So when I started the music videos in 2003. You started music videos in 2003 or you started? Oh, no. Or you, oh, okay, yeah. Yes, music video. But you started first, filmmaking first, yes. in the I, 90s. 1997 was my first film. Okay. Yes. And so then it was a little bit of a journey, but I finally got into music videos, which was really hard to get into in the two, in, the, in the early 2000s. It was a, there was no, there was barely any mobile phones. There was barely any internet. Uh, and there was barely anything referred to as digital. It was all analog. It was film. It was a, an antiquated, but much more preferred still to this day process because of the just because of the aesthetic of it all. It was, just, it's, it was a better process, but it was a more costly process. And in the wake of the music industry faltering and falling simultaneously as digital technology um, got better, they kind of found the perfect marriage. Because in the 2009 era, 2010 era, when, when labels were, were, were losing money because they weren't selling CDs, record stores were closing, they thought the sky was falling. They thought it was mm -hmm. over they because did. we used to get our back end payment on music videos within two weeks. It became three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, two months. So we knew something was up because if DMX or Britney Spears sold a million CDs in week one, the labels made a real 16 million real cash dollars. Mm -hmm. It wasn't manipulated data. It wasn't based on streams and views and all that other stuff that's happening now, which is all tricanery and funny numbers based on this or that. Yeah. I even just think I heard Kanye, he made a million dollars first week, which is, my God, if that was, if this was 1999, he would have made $50 million. It's an entirely different time um, based on sales versus streams and, and, and whatnot. So um, music videos back then, as hard as it was getting into, uh, once you're in and you accomplish it and you accomplish success, uh, and you start to have videos that track and hit the top 10 and hit, you know, hit number one on the charts, you start to get bigger budgets, right? So, um, mm -hmm. when you, then the labels would just give you a contract, you'd have to become a, a, a verified vendor. You'd have to go through this whole banking process. And once you, once you're an approved vendor, you would just get in videos once they were locked in, whether it was 50 grand, a hundred grand, 200 grand, 300 grand, 500 grand. Mm -hmm. The labels are sending you that money with an agreement that had everything covered. I didn't have to worry about sync. I didn't have to worry about artists signing off on stuff. It was all covered in the agreements because it was a different model back then. Yeah. And to this day now, even if just doing a recent Soldier Boy video, um, 
he we make him just sign um, uh, uh, an agreement based on his deal with his label, and it's it's and because he controls all his own production mm-hmm. and his own writers. Mix shout out to Mix, Mixology. Shout um, out to Mix. Uh, it's been a pretty seamless process um, for me still in the world of music videos, right? Which is different than film and TV, which is a nightmare. And and just to go back to what you're saying before. Uh, I can imagine in the 70s, if there was a rock band, there was five members and there was a writer and a producer, which was kind of like the norm. Seven guys and a girl. It was a much smaller number of people that needed to be accounted for. They would all sign a release and you were good. But nowadays, you may have a producer and an engineer that maybe added this beat or this hi hat. Uh, a rapper may have said this. Or you may, another rapper may have come in and uh, did this and a singer may have come and, and, yeah. and sang this hook so you have to and if you did that track six months ago you know in today's six in, in today's world six months can be like five years and you're mm-hmm. trying to work where did this artist go well she just moved over here well he's over here well can you get to, well, the number changed yeah y- you kind of find yourself in this like this whirlwind of just chaos and trying to get something cleared which i know which is why you are <laughs> it's what i do uh, yeah it's what you do yeah but that you just took me down so many different lanes, and now my head's spinning <laughs> as normal with you. <laughs> but yes, let's okay. But I want you to walk like artists through the process who maybe haven't done sure. a lot of music videos. Sure. Um, what, is, what does that entail? Like, let's say okay, they sure, sure, someone sure. approaches you to do, do a music so, video. So, for example, Avery Wilson uh, just hit me up about doing a music video. Okay. Avery Wilson's a uh, Avery Wilson's an amazing singer. He's currently uh, doing the Wiz uh, on Broadway, uh, and he said, "Hey, Rage, I need a music video." Here's my budget. Um, here's the song. Um, here's my loose idea uh, of what I want to do. Okay. So then I always reply back to whether it's Avery Wilson, whether it's the new artist that has a, a bit of a budget, or whether it's someone like Five Finger Death Punch or Ty Dolla Sign, whoever it is. I say, okay, city, budget, and date. Those are my first three questions. I need to know what city it's in, how much you got, and when. Because yeah. like you, I also have a schedule. My people that I want to use to make your video look great have a schedule. And that's where, you know, kind of old school meets new school kind of gets twisted because a lot of these artists under 30 years old and the ones under 20 years old, they just don't have the understanding or comprehension that this is a process. This isn't just, at least with someone like myself, I just don't do a a pull-up video where I'm going to come out with my phone or some little camera and one tube light and some smoke and say, no, oh, yeah, we're, we're doing you're the whole production. No, you've been on my set, so you kind of know what it yeah, is. Yeah, I've been on those music video sets. There's always, oh, man, 20, 20 people at minimum. At minimum, yeah. Well, yeah, the most recent one I did with Corey Taylor, we had a 120-person crew. We had 600 background, 120. seven cameras, and it was uh, that was about... 250k so um but you know when you want to do you know music videos at a high level um and be competitive those are the resources that you need so mm-hmm. a lot of times artists you know have these these you know these um, these 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 very epic ideas but their budget is just very non-epic and, and how so, can you make that work for them though well it's not well that's the i don't even look at it that i mean i do look at it that way but from a um from the standpoint of being accountable i always i'm never the no guy i'm always the guy who says well we can't do that but we can do this there's always a solution to a problem mm-hmm. now you want you want 20 models and bikinis and a and a camel next to you rapping <laughs> but you know we may have to just you know go down to three girls and then maybe you just got one of your boys doing the rap part. Like, like there is a way to get your vision across, but you know you have to be respectful and accountable. And I, I would say that a, a lot of artists, um, rock side, rap side, sometimes they 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 only live in the world of what they see on their phone or what they see on YouTube and see what the other people are doing. And it's all about their tunnel vision. It's about their story. But you have to step outside yourself and and understand that the person you're going to, whether it's a a newer director, male, female, whether they're uh, got a lot of equipment, a little bit of equipment, you're asking them to help you make your dreams come true. Mm. So um, it's like one of my boys just put up there. I don't want to say his name, but he's like, "Oh, your favorite, your favorite rich rapper with the with the Bentley and the gold chains and Rolex don't have five hundred dollars to pay a cameraman." It's like it's like you know, yeah. There's a lot of misconceptions invest, out there. Yeah, and you yeah. have to. Well, this industry is a lot of smoke and mirrors, but yeah, but you but gotta invest it, in that. But essentially, it comes down to the artist or the label reach out. Here's the song. 
And I prefer, I'm at a stage in my career where I only do single bids. I, I, I'm not going to. Okay, guys, I am interrupting the show very quickly to talk to you about music distribution. Distribution is how you get your music onto the platform, such as Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, YouTube Music, and the many others. And there is a bunch of different digital distribution companies that help to get your music out there and to pay you for those streams and sales on those platforms. And I really mean there's a bunch. So I know that it can be overwhelming to decide who to use to distribute your music. And I wish that there was an easy answer that I can give you guys. But honestly, that's just something that you have to decide on your own by doing your research and looking into what kind of tools and resources and stats and data these distribution companies give you, how they pay you, um, how much they pay you, how often do they pay you, and also how you pay them. Um, do you pay them on a subscription model basis by an annual fee? Do you pay them a one-time fee? These are all the things that you should be looking at uh, when you're choosing your digital distribution company. But if you end up choosing DistroKid or TuneCore to distribute your music, then I have a discount code for you all. For DistroKid, you can get 7% off. And for TuneCore, you can get 20% off of the sign-up fee. These codes you can find inside my description box of YouTube. Or if you are listening to this on Spotify or Apple Music, then you will find it in my description as well. Now, Back to the show. Once you get older and established and you have personal things you've, you've attained in your life, mm -hmm. you, you're just not that that kid on the hustle anymore, right? Because you have responsibility. So you, I just can't spend a whole day writing a treatment for somebody that may or may not have a budget for something that may or may not even happen. Okay, but so, why is a treatment for people who oh, don't so, know what that so, means? Um, a treatment is basically the script for the video. It could okay. be one page, could be three or four pages. It could have a lot of visual references. It could have a, a little bit of text. It could be very vibey or it could be something that's more um, more narrative based, mm -hmm. depending upon what the artist wants uh, and, again, what the resources are. A lot of times I will encourage most artists, no matter what genre or music they're in, to do something that's performance based. So, What does um, that mean? Huh? What does that mean? So a performance based video as opposed to a narrative based video. So... Um, in the case of uh, a rock band, right? I think a rock band uh, should be in a situation where they're playing all their instruments. We go okay. in for proper coverage. We do, you know, we do some cool in-camera techniques and just let the the audience or their fans um, kind of let let them see the perform. Let them see them perform the song so it resonates more with them, mm -hmm. especially if they're a newer act. So um, you're not trying to sell them on some narrative about some story that. They're not really invested in because they really don't know you yet. Oh, I really like that. Yeah. So you're trying to, it's a way of also like introducing them as an act to the Yeah. Audience. And same thing with, with, with artists or singers or rappers. Like, you, get, you know, you're, no matter what your style is, whether it's a hoodie and Tim's or whether it's, you know, more glam and designer based with, with jewelry, um, a lot of great videos. I mean, using going back to Missy or Busta, like they actually had great performance videos that involved some narrative. But it was all about the in-camera magic that was happening and letting their performance really sell you, mm -hmm. you know. And and uh, there's a lot of great in-camera techniques that you can use to make low-budget videos or independent videos like really, really cool. And um, I would just encourage that any artist reaching out to a filmmaker or a music video director or a content creator, uh, all the different names we have now. Um, nice. It used to be just director when I was coming up. <laughs> but um, when you reach out to somebody, you know, look at their work. And if you're serious, you respectfully hit them up and say, hey, listen, this is what I want to do. I like your work. This is the budget I have. And and I I, I, I literally don't even look at – I don't want – I get hit hit up with a lot of DMs. Mm -hmm. And I don't even look at the ones that say, hey, what do you charge for a video? No, it's not what do I charge for a video. 99.9% of the time, those people don't have budget anyways. They're just like – trying to flex and just and they don't have the, yeah. the the capacity to really think beyond themselves and be respectful but because they haven't already set aside yeah money yeah, for yeah, them yeah and then i don't have the time to sit and answer every dm about because i'm too busy wor working right mm, for sure but um you should already it's not what do i charge it's it's what do you have as a budget and whatever your budget is well, i don't care if it's 0k 1k 2k 10k if you come in respectfully i refer you to somebody that can do your your video for you so if you're an artist out there and want to get a good music video done, chances are you already know somebody in your circle that that has a camera that has some talent that can get it done for you. Mm -hmm. You don't need that name, that rock star name, 
that that um, is really not going to help you. Even even if, even if I do an amazing video for an artist that has no following or no distribution, that music video, the money that you spend on that video, even though I did my job, it's not going to help you because you still need to, all those other pieces together to help get that music and that music video out there. You need radio promo, you need video promo, you need all those mm -hmm. different. That you need a team of people to help you win. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, I think that's the advice you're going to give, but. We will go with that. You do need a whole team of people for that. I wanted to touch on that also because you said uh, one of the videos you just did for Corey Taylor was 120 people. Crew, yeah. Yes, 120 crew. 120 person crew. So there's a lot of people that get in the mix. And then do, are there times like that people go over budget like while they are doing the video with you? The ones, I guess, that are signed to a label, those are... So, so fortunately, um, the only times that we've ever gone over budget it's it's due to talent being late like and and I'll, I'll pat myself on the back because once you know what you're doing and and you're legit at what you do and you're a pro it it just comes from experience that, that you know your success is derivative of everything that you've done up until that point and on the Corey Taylor video I literally had his his manager for for many 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 years Corey Brennan uh, who's somewhat of an icon in the music business and in the hard and in, in the hard rock scene? It, he he literally said to me, "I can't believe we just did all this in less than twelve hours. It was like eleven hours and forty five minutes. They thought we were going to be there for like <laughs> two, eighteen sorry. hours, and um, at at a minimum. So he and the and whole team shook their heads. And my crew, because I had seven cameras, all doing very specific things that I knew." I knew how I would incorporate them into the music video edit. Mm -hmm. And some of them were like, oh, really? they really didn't understand. But then when they saw the video, they're like, now I know why I did that. And now I know why you had me do it. go here. Why This is why I yeah. know. And that's also a good reason why you need a big crew and all the team, but you don't need that. Oh, actually, I did want to bring up a point because of with budget and team, how if you are assigned to a label, you are the label, I guess, pays for the music video. But essentially, it's coming out of you have to recoup those fees. Yeah. So you have to be mindful of when you have these grand ideas and concepts that are going to take um, more and more bodies to fulfill that idea. And I actually just saw a video. Where was this video from? I don't know if you've seen it, but it was a video of Trinidad James. And he was talking about how for one of his videos or his first one of his first music videos it was with TI and Young Jeezy and Two Chains mm -hmm. that when he got the itemized expenses back from the label for what he had to pay for for that video or what he had to recoup for that video there was a $40,000 line item for a wardrobe and he had no, no idea how that even happened because if you look at the video now to to this day, it's still out there. Um, Young Jeezy, he just had on a dicky outfit and then <laughs> T.I. had on his own clothing line and they ended up charging the label $40,000. But that's not actually charging the label. That's the artist has to recoup that. Yeah. So I want artists to always keep that in mind that you have to pay for that in some way, shape or form. So you need to be making sure that everything is going the way that you see it and that people aren't trying to take advantage of your video budget. Yeah, well, listen, um, it's the music business and just like Wall Street and every other business we know of, there are some people who are less scrupulous than others and <laughs> some people will, you know, take advantage of situations. And yes. uh, I've heard stories about Gucci bags falling off the truck. I've heard all kinds of money in paper bags being passed off to people. There's all kinds of things that happen in this crazy music business there, oh for sure there is so i said method to the mu music but it's because there's a method to the madness yeah and this business is madness for oh, you kind of actually answered my next question that i was going to go into because with budget i was trying to figure out for people who artists who don't have as big of a budget um like what are some alternatives or options for them if they still want to have a good video so you are kind of touching that already but i guess for compensating you let's go with that what are some other forms of compensation that you except or other people would take if they don't have as big of a budget? So um, that's more of a new generation thing, but I, I'll, I'll touch on it quickly. About seven or eight years ago, I started getting, you know, uh, direct messages in, in Facebook and on, on Instagram 
um, from artists saying, hey, um, I love your work and um, I don't have much of a budget, but I'll share my project with you and give you my publishing mm -hmm. uh, if you do my music videos. And now, see, for me, again, I think I re touched on this earlier, as, as, a, as a guy, as a, as a veteran and as a family man, you acquire things in life. You get a house, you get a mortgage, you get an apartment, you get cars. You, you're in a position where you just can't risk time on a maybe that someone breaks through on a, yeah. on a hit song and maybe that publishing will be worth something. It's just there's – I know that there's so many unknown variables that you can't predict with any sort of rationale that – that this video I'm getting half the publishing on is going to be a hit and I'm going to make a lot of money. Like that is just, uh, it's, it's craziness. Mm -hmm. It's crazy town. So, um, but that is more commonplace now because there are so many more artists uh, and there are so many more content cr creators and there's a lot more unknown content creators today than there were even five years ago. And there's a lot more unknown artists today than there were five years ago. So they're kind of finding their own ways to each other yeah. and have this community. And so they, maybe they trade, they, they're trading publishing for videos and making videos now is so much cheaper than, I mean, you could, you could shoot five videos in one day for, for 500 bucks. I mean, there is just now that's, not saying that you're getting models and you're getting luxurious cars and you're not getting hotel rooms and, you know, you're not getting permits and things like that. But where there's a will, there's a way. Yes. And, you know, if you got that, if you got that desire and you got that, that passion and you really want to make it and you're about your business, then you will find a way to get it done. You will find the right filmmaking partner or content creating partners that have the same vision for you that they have for themselves. And if they believe in you and you believe in them, that's the perfect that's the perfect combination. It's when you I go agree. at somebody the wrong way with the wrong approach and the wrong adjectives and just you come across like too street or too unprofessional, you're only going to get that in return. And then that most often doesn't lead to success. Yeah. All right. Well, let's hope that that resonated with somebody in some way. Because um, you brought up content content creation because that's a very big thing and I've actually never asked you your opinion on this so I'm excited to hear what you have to say about this why do you think that music videos are still important for an artist's career today in this new age of short form content and like TikTok videos why is it important for them to actually invest in a full length music video well it's uh the reason why brands spend so much money on commercials, whether it's toothpaste, whether it's a Ford, whether it's a Pepsi, um, these 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 brands spend millions of dollars on creating content and commercials because they want you to be able to see that their car, their soda, their water, uh, their candy is better than their competitors. So that same mentality of of, of why they put money behind their brand is the same reason why you've got to put money behind your brand. Mm -hmm. So you, so Preach. people feel that can see that you're better or superior or more talented yes. or just more vivacious or more attractive or whatever, whatever is in your wheelhouse of what you're trying to sell, you have to do that and create that visual. So people believe in you and what you're trying to say and sell. Yeah. I think that was very well said. Cause I feel the same way that it, uh, earlier I said the business all smoke and mirrors, and it, it is, but at the same time, you do want to appear to be, um, be, I guess, better than other people out there. Like you want people to come to you and watch your videos and you want to sell them who you are in a more grand way. So I think that yeah, that I'm, mean, I'm all for it too. I'm back and forth on it because I feel I don't have TikTok, but I know how to take it over. And I know that a lot of people are focusing on that. But I, since I do some music videos with you and I see how that works – it is more professional and it does put you on a different level than um, being a content creator. It like separates you from yeah. how you were saying, like people are artists or content creators. I think that once you're, if you're just doing your music, just doing TikTok posts and not doing a music video, then you're just going to be seen as like an influencer or yeah. a content creator rather than a musician and artist. Yeah. And that's what I think the difference is. Another reason why I think that the music videos are still important and relevant is because it's a way to draw an audience, to, a new audience to you, but at the same time, it's a way to generate um, more revenue for you because yeah. when, I don't know, you can listen to somebody's song on Spotify, Apple, all of that, but if 
there's a video link to it, then you're going to go to YouTube for that. Back. But I wanted to say that that was important to do music videos because it's a uh, form of generating... It's a different way of generating other income. And this is a time where I'm going to also drop some knowledge bombs on some people, it, which is when somebody comes and um, watches your videos on YouTube, then that means you are able to collect um, money from the ad revenue that's on YouTube. And then you also, on the back end, would get performance royalties for those streams as well. So it's important that you try to get people to come to watch a visual rather than just listening to your music on those other platforms. Uh, and and I, I think while all those funnels, revenue streams are important um, and they're, they're and they're a necessity, I think the 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 one overwhelming reason why an artist or a group should make a music video is to connect with people. And now and your fans and your and you and if you have already got a cult following, you want to expand your cult following. You want to be yeah. able to come out of your region. You want to you want to go national, international. You want to connect with people. So you, you so again, depending on what style of music you're making, some a lot of it's about bravado. A lot of it's about what do I got? It's what I what am I selling? You just need to be able to make sure, no matter what genre of music that you're into, that you're connecting with an audience who value you enough to want to buy tickets to a show, yeah. buy your merch, yeah. buy your bundles, become super fans, come yes. meet you at signings. That's what you want to do, accomplish from a music video. So I know that may go over some artists' heads because like, they're just so focused on, listen, uh, mobile phones, social media uh, has tend to dumb down a lot of stuff in our lives and, and in society. Um, and I think to a degree now it's starting to dumb down. Uh, it's making a lot of artists dumb. Rock, metal, pop, hip hop. They just are just, they're in this constant competitive yeah. zone. And they forget about all that time they spend in the studio making that music. The music is for people to. Yeah, it's to, I, connect, it's to connect. It's for us yeah, to feel yeah, it. Like yeah. we got to feel it and resonate with it. it. That doesn't mean that everything has to be deep. Like, of course, party no. songs, same thing. That connects with you because I'm out. I want to shake my ass. I want to twerk. I want to do that. That resonates. You still have to think about yeah. connecting with your audience. Yeah. Um, I think we should move on right now to, I guess, flip the conversation more towards the TV film side now because we spent a good amount of time on the music video side, which thank you for that. Mm -hmm. But I guess we'll start. We can go back to what I was saying, how whenever somebody wants to use your music in TV and film, we're just going to stick on TV and film, not every other area where they can sync your music. When somebody wants to use your music, they have to get permission from all of the rights holders. And how this is normally done is through a contract. They're going to negotiate a contract with um, the rights holders of the sound recording and also for the rights holders of the composition. And inside the contract, it's going to say more than just you're allowed to use my song in the TV, in the TV show, in the film. It's also going to specify the different ways that they are able to use it. So like if they can use it in a soundtrack or if they can also use your song in promo videos, if they can also use your song for the trailer and not just in a certain or specific scene. So there's more things that go along with that contract than just when I say you have to get permission, there's um, there will be a contract that you have to negotiate. They have to specify those things as well. And the contract will also include how you will be paid for them using your music in their project. And this can be done in many different ways. There's the typical standard ways, though, which is one, you can get an upfront fee, which was they call a sync fee, but also they pay the same thing to the master rights holders as well. And not everybody pays an upfront fee to use your music in movies. It just all depends on the budget of the film. But if they do, then normally that is a fee that you have to negotiate with them. At the same time, if you don't get paid an upfront fee, then you should worry not because there is performance royalties that will be generated at the same time. Whenever that uh, TV show or film is being streamed on any of the platforms or played on TV, that is going to get paid to your PRO and then they're going to pay that out to you. And that is based off of the duration that was used, like how much of your song was used in that episode or that movie, if it was a background vocal, if it was somebody actually sung it or performed it um, on camera, all that's going to go. If it was a theme song, if it was using the 
closing, if it was scenes, if it was used in the beginning, um, opener, then all that's going to go into how much the royalty rate's going to change based off of that. But I say all that to say... Well that well that whole spiel is what made me reach out to you. Maybe what? Oh, what made you reach out to me? When when I was doing a deep dive, when I was contemplating this platform, which is it solves problems for everybody from content creators, directors, producers, uh editors to artists that are on the come up trying to get some attention who don't have any social media or very little social media, no label deal, no connections. You find that right filmmaker, producer, that has a film or a TV show that need music and your and your song is, is 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 right for it, you basically do a deal with that with that with that filmmaker so your song can be in that film or TV show because as she just said, you're winning because you will now have a presence. And and I think I think now more so than ever, because if you're an unknown if you're an unknown singer or rapper or rocker and your song gets placed in a film or TV show right now and it's getting a hundred million streams over the course of a year. Even if ten percent of the people that hear your song in that in that fight scene um, shazam you, that's 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 ten million people that would have shazammed your song. And even if ten percent of those people end up going to your socials and downloading your song, uh, that's a million people. And even if ten percent of those people become super fans, it's a hundred thousand super fans that you didn't have before because your song was placed in a film and TV show that you never would have had the chance to before without being able to make yourself available and go and pitch your music to that writer, producer, director to get your song placed in the first place. And so when Tania said that in her vlog that I that I found when I did my deep dive, <laughs> I got to find her and I found out she was in Yonkers and she was close to me and we got together and here we was are. I in Yonkers? All yeah. this time later. So <laughs> true words have never been said. True words have never been said. That, I guess that is our origin story that I didn't think about before this, but... Uh, with I, let me just move on to one of my questions with that since you do work as a producer filmmaker director you wear all the hats that you wear all over the TV film industry can you explain to us or like how the how a budget works in film yeah and um, again it's it's I have the benefit of, of having um, experience how a budget works for music sorry yes the music budget for film yes um, and things have as I was saying, because I have the benefit of experience, which is code for being around for a long time, um, things have changed. And so to kind of be quick with it, um, whether your budget is, whether the film budget or the TV budget is a million dollars or $10 million, there will be a line item in the budget because the budget consists of line items. Okay. Above the line, which is writer, director, producer. Below the line, which is mostly like crew and then services. And so on a million dollar budget, as an example, maybe in the budget there's a, a line item for music for $50,000, which will be original composition, which is a composer, and then maybe, say, 50 needle drops. And needle drops are like cues that you need in a bar scene, fight scene, club scene, love scene, so on and so forth. Yes, um, and I also want to say that cues, for people who don't know that, that also just means you're a song. Right. And so <laughs> but what often happens during production is there's always going to be overages. Somebody will be late. Something broke. Something needs to be replayed. We didn't order what we so So what happens on overages and mus- in, in, in budgets on film and TV, they usually cannibalize the music the budget music first budget. because that's the oh, last no. thing to worry about. <laughs> and we'll figure it out later. And so that 50K that was maybe in there on that million dollar budget maybe get down to $13,000. Wow. So that breaks my that's heart. why that's why. Um, directors uh, can't get those name songs that they want because not only in today's day and age is it too expensive, but it's also uh, from a time management standpoint, it's impossible to get anything cleared in short order. It it takes weeks upon weeks, if not months, to get (laughs) one song cleared. So that's why we created Boombox Apocalypse, pre-cleared music catalog with names and and emerging artists. Uh, Which I'll have to bring you back to. Yeah. We have two also co-founders besides us, but maybe I'll do Elias an episode with all of us. Yeah, yeah shout out to yeah. Chris and Elias. Nonpoint and Grey Days too, because I'm going to shout out their bands while we're here. But um, yeah, we'll probably do another episode with all of us and walk them through more. Because I feel like we barely even scratched the surface and we're running out of time. So... <laughs> um, I feel like I'm Batman at the Justice League and I recruited like, you know, the, the Wonder Woman and Flash and... Um, I'll be, I'll take Wonder Woman. <laughs> I am Wonder Woman. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yes. 
with oh thank you for explaining the way that budget works because I didn't even know some of that so that blew my mind with hmm, what's one of the questions I want to really actually get into oh what would you what how do you know that a song is what makes a song film tv ready like in your opinion since you are you have like that cinematic ear of choosing like what goes with what scenes and you actually I know for you with your process when you are writing a movie or um, working on a movie you're always thinking about what songs would set the scene behind it so what makes a song tv film ready that that's one of those tricky questions where you'll ask 10 directors and you'll get 10 different yeah, answers I but hear from I you. think for the most part for me uh it just has to it just has to hit for lack of a better way to describe it it just needs to it just needs to fit um it, let me say it this way a lot of times you may be watching some movies now that you see or you see in a platform you saw a cool trailer for it you you like the actor and you're like okay it looks good the acting's good but the music just it's like what how, what happened to the music you're like it doesn't hit it's because the budget got squashed mm -hmm. and then they had they were forced to choose music that they didn't want to use because of the budget and because of the time frame, because usually on these plus platforms, Paramount Plus, Hulu Plus, uh, all these different pluses, BET Plus, they need content like every quarter. So you're mm -hmm. up against a deadline. So you got to choose music that doesn't really hit the way you want it to hit. So I guess that's... My, it's, it's a <laughs> that also broke my heart. You got to choose music that yeah, doesn't to, hit yeah, the way you really you, want it to you, hit. You just can't sit there all day Who wants and, that? and pick music that you just don't have that luxury of time or money. Yeah. Um, but for me specifically, and I think just in our process of working together, like I will know right away if a song is of quality that I think can be used like over and over and over again. I'll use one example. I was in London doing a music video and I was in an Urban Outfitters. This is like 2010 or 11. I was trying on some jeans and, and in that in that locker room space, I suddenly heard a song come on over the speaker. The song was called, uh, it was, the song was by Empire of the Sun. Okay. And it was Walking on the Moon. Okay. And it was, uh, and it was just one of these songs that it would just hit me right away. I'm like, oh my God. It was just instant ear candy. And it was like, the, I loved it. So I bought the CD and of course, like seven other songs had all had that same, that, that same um, 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 beautiful sound. And I discovered when I got back to LA, that two of the other songs that were on that CD were being used for like different commercials, different mm -hmm. brands. And to this day, uh, that song has been synced over and over and over and over again. So like, I personally have an ear for songs that that just I feel would would resonate in multiple genres with multiple films. Yeah, I think but, that actually was a really good point. I didn't think that was gonna be your answer at all. I thought you were gonna go into like quality or how things in the sound, but no. you, that is a really good point that it's how many times do you think it can be used and what, and I guess that's what, that's a big factor of what would make a song TV film ready is can it be used across multiple genres, um, multiple ads, even like commercials, TV, film. Well, because I, I, I've managed acts and I've, I've, I've helped sign acts, I've picked singles for artists, like the term that a lot of writers uh, use, and I want you to meet my friend Tish Hyman, who's been nominated for a few Grammys, most of her. <laughs> oh yeah, you actually mentioned her to me so, before. So she, when, when writers at her level who work with people like Kanye and, 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 and her and, and all kinds of other big artists, uh, they say, oh, this is this is very syncable. This is a syncable song. Like yeah. they're writing songs that they know they could be used for commercials tomorrow. Yeah. Let alone be syncable. Oh my God, I have someone that I've introduced yeah. you to too that I remember that has syncable songs. Oh, I'm but sorry. Let me correct myself. It wasn't walking. It's walking on a dream. That was just, just okay. so Empire of the Sun, Walking on a Dream, kind of like set me down this whole road. So I encourage everybody, you want to hear a song that's made th this group <laughs> money over and over and over and over again? Empire of the Sun, Walking on a Dream. That whole album, I forget the name of the album, all these songs were amazing. Wait, actually, can I do ask, do I have time to ask one more question? Okay. I, I was going to ask, what do you need to place the music, to use the music? I know this answer, but I want to hear from you, and then I guess I'll put that into because I just want the artists out there to know like what to expect when they come to you or me or anyone. Okay. What do they need? Um, one, they're gonna make you're gonna need to make sure that the rights can get be cleared, and that's something that I want to stress. I hope that you actually talk to everybody who owns any part of the song before you even consider 
um, giving your song to anybody to use in TV and film. And you just answer your own question. <laughs> yes. That's yes. 100% correct, yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, because in case you don't know, it's if I take your song that you told me was cleared and I just take you at face value or I didn't look at your paperwork and I believed you, and this movie, your TV show, is suddenly now on Netflix or Amazon, and I'm having an amazing life because my movie is now on Amazon. Yeah. And I suddenly get an email from Amazon saying, you screwed up. We're, we got a cease and desist mm -hmm. against your movie because song number 13. Yeah, you violated the copyright. Has been violated because you didn't get the proper due diligence signed off on. Yeah. I'm having the worst day, month, Ooh, year of my life. I will have the worst day now too because now I'm part of this. So <laughs> Right. That's why I go so hard on trying to make sure that everything is cleared. Yes. So I guess just make sure everything is cleared before. Like have that conversation. If you have any songs that you are trying to get into movies or TV shows or commercials or video games, whatever it is, make sure that you have already had that conversation and already got uh, everyone that's part of that song on board before doing so. And then just to throw in there, you will also need to have the stems and all the other song files because some people don't. If it's like a song from a long time ago, they don't have that anymore, and we actually do need that because of editing for her. Yeah, and um, to segue out, to give her an off-ramp, when <laughs> Boombox Apocalypse is launched, uh, we are basically the Trojan horse, the cheat code for you to get your stuff in film and TV. Yes, we so, are. Um, but it's very curated. Um, we're looking for the best of the best, and we have a very... And um, we already have the best of the best on board. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so look forward to hearing your music soon. Yeah. All right. Okay, before we end, if this episode has been helpful to you or if any video that I have done has been helpful to you, then please be helpful to me. You can share my content on Instagram, repost it on your pages, repost it on your story, DM it to whoever needs it. You guys actually normally do a really good job at that anyway, but I'm just reminding you. Also to help me, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notifica notification bell so you can be notified whenever I release a new episode. And now that I am on Spotify and Apple Music, please go follow me on there as well. And beyond that, you actually can leave ratings and reviews on Spotify and Apple Music on a podcast so leave me a high rating five stars because I'm a five star chick wanted to say five star but we're gonna keep it clean <laughs> yes so I know that that sounds like a lot guys but honestly we're on these apps every day anyways and I just made somebody do it and watch them do it and it took them less than five minutes so <laughs> if you want this podcast to keep up and running then take the five minutes and please do that for me on YouTube, you will search Tania Coates, T-Y-N-I-A space C-O-A-T-S. On Instagram, you can find me at Tania Coates, no space, T-Y-N-I-A C-O-A-T-S. And on Spotify and Apple Music, you can find me by searching for the show Method to the Music. So in the meantime and in between time, do not get lost in the madness that is the music business because there is a method to the music. Bye, guys.